Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com. Now, as I was working on the upcoming perspective sketching series that you're going to be able to find in the store, I decided to leave a couple topics out so I could make them into free videos, just to give you guys sort of a preview of what these series are going to be like. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the idea of a horizon line and the viewpoint that results from it. Because what you're looking at right here is a problem that I see all the time from beginner artists. Can you tell what's wrong with this illustration? What you're seeing is the top of this object, and it's above the horizon line. Now, this is something that never happens. So let's roll it back a bit here. If you just grab a mug or some sort of cylindrical object on your desk, hold it out in front of you. If you lift it way up in the air, you can see the bottom of the mug. If you lower it way down, you can see the top of the mug. That's because what you're doing is essentially changing your viewpoint on the mug. You're either looking down at it or looking up at it. Well, one of the most basic rules of linear perspective says that any object that is below the horizon line is going to show its top surface. If you move that same object above the horizon line, you'll see the bottom surface. Of course, it's impossible to see both the top and the bottom at the same time. So back in this original example, here you're looking at the top of an object, even though it's above the horizon line. To correct this drawing, what you'd actually see is just the front face. You would not see the top at all because of your vantage point. So to help you learn more about this concept, I've created a worksheet. And so your assignment is going to be to locate and add in the horizon line to each of my sample compositions. And there's a trick to this. So let's take this as an example. Here's a cube sitting in a white void. There should be a visible horizon line somewhere, and it's my job to find out where it goes. Now, if you're doing this on paper, you would probably need a ruler. If you're doing it in Photoshop, you can simply use the line tool. So here I'm going to use the line tool, and I'm going to find two parallel lines in the image. And I'm going to take those lines and extend them off into the distance. See where they cross? That intersection lies on the horizon line. So I'll take that and I'll draw a black line there. And if you want to double check your work, you can actually follow another set of parallel lines and do the same process. So here I'll take these top two lines that define the top of this cube. And you can see they intersect at about the exact same place. Now, my drawing is not perfectly accurate, so they're not quite right, but it's pretty close. So when you look at this drawing, the addition of this horizon line makes it seem a lot more anchored in place than if it were just sitting in a void. This gives it a sense of volume and distance. Here's another example. This time I'm looking considerably further down at the object. I have a higher vantage point, but how much higher? Well, let's try the same trick again. So I'm going to follow these parallel lines off into the distance. And in doing so, eventually they will cross. Now, in this case, they've crossed completely outside of my paper. They've sort of gone off the paper and onto the desk. Well, that's allowed. What that means here is that the horizon line is actually out of your image. And it's really common for this to happen. There's really only a narrow range of vantage points that'll actually have your horizon line right in the image. Your assignment is going to be to take the included worksheet and add in the horizon line. Each of the examples has an object, but no horizon line. And you're more than welcome to do this as a printout, and you just use a ruler and a pencil and paper, or you can do it digitally, whichever way works better for you. Now, if you want some bonus points, you can do the same exact exercise with photographs. If you find some photographs online that have long straight lines in them, uh, buildings are great for this, put them pretty small on a larger sheet of white paper to give yourself some extra space, and then extend those lines. Ultimately, perspective can seem confusing, but one of the best ways to get started is to know where your horizon line is. If you can use that as a reference point, you're much less likely to make common mistakes. And if you want to learn more about perspective, I've got two series coming out in the store very shortly. So look forward to those. Thanks for coming to controlpaint.com, guys.